All righty, guys. Welcome to our weekly outlook. Thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, it is the week of October 28th. We are getting to the end of October and starting a new month this week. Very exciting. First and foremost, I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Um, some of you guys are new on here. So what I want to tell you guys real quick is before this webinar is done, by the end of this webinar, guys, you're going to have a clear understanding of what setups I am interested in. And then I'm also going to share some information with you guys if you want to learn a little bit more about what I do at the end. But first and foremost, if you guys are brand new here, I want to introduce myself. My name is David Schinkel. I'm the CEO and founder of Positive Traders. Um, I've actually been doing these weekly outlooks for over two years, uh, just about every single Sunday for you guys. I just really started to recently kind of market it. I have a whole YouTube channel with tons and tons of videos on there or tons of previous outlooks. I'm going to also be working on more content for my YouTube channel, working on videos for you guys, and really just trying to share the love and the knowledge with you guys. Um, but I am 25 years old. I am going on my fifth year of trading or uh, being in the Forex markets, going on my third, moving into my fourth year, actually moving into my third year, or third, yeah, third going into fourth year of doing this full time. So um, I live off of trading. I have, if you guys see my background right now, I just got into LA. Finally, after a year, I'm finally back home. Um, I've been traveling the world for the past year. Uh, some of you guys may have seen me in Australia. I was in Australia for six months in the Gold Coast, spending some time out there. Really just traveling all over the place. I went to Belize for a couple weeks and spent some time down there. And now I'm in LA. Um, I'm actually very excited to let you guys know that in two days, on Tuesday, I'm actually headed out to Thailand. I'm going to be stopping in Beijing first on my way over to Thailand. And I'm going to be spending about a month in Chiang Mai and just kind of uh, just working out there. But I'm going out there to kind of clear the energy. I'm sure most of you guys, you know, probably feel where you're at. Sometimes there's like negative energy and you just kind of need to detox. And so that's how I feel. And because of Forex, guys, because of the time freedom, I am blessed enough to just be able to literally just pick up and say, hey, I want to go to Thailand for a few months just to detox. And I'm going to rent a villa out there and just spend it all to myself and just grinding, working for you guys, building content and just doing big things for you guys. So that's a little bit of history about me. For, but other than that, let's go ahead and get into things. I do just want to let you guys know that this is just my opinion on uh, the market for the week, you guys. Okay. So what I tell you guys is just my opinion. Please do not consider it as financial advice. Um, it should just be used as educational informational purposes and maybe help you guys with your analysis on the charts. Um, before we jump into things for some of you guys that are new, just to give you guys a little bit of credibility or to, sh to show you guys why, um, I feel like I am, um, justified to, or why I, I feel like I have the qualifications to share things with you guys. Well, not only do I have a lot of experience and I live off of trading, but just to kind of like put into, into real time, I'm just going to share with you guys just like three setups. Now these setups are done, but I'm just showing you guys, um, uh, what we were looking for just to hold on. Let me just back up. Let me get this on here because it deleted everything. And we're going to start on the dollar index, show you guys press play. So this was back on September 13th. I had mentioned that we were probably going to see a move like this on the dollar index. And we did. That's exactly what we saw. Um, if I move over to Euro USD, same thing, but the opposite. So I was expecting a rise in Euro USD and then a drop. And that was back on September 13th. You guys can see in the top left here where my cursor is, that's a date from September 13th. And we've seen price follow through. And then USB CAD as well, okay? So I do, I, I'm gonna be sharing like more setups like this. Um, these setups I generally share inside of my Telegram, but watch this one as well. Lots of setups today, guys, to share with you. I'm just giving you guys some credibility, okay? And then we were talking about a buy zone on USD CAD back on the 13th down in this area and we can see that that buy zone was met pretty well, okay? So I have pretty good accuracy in the market, but let's go ahead and jump into real time we're working with today. Very quickly, I do wanna look at the economic calendar first, all right? A lot of you guys um, put a lot of emphasis on the technical, um, technical analysis, which is you know trend lines and charts, but the main key is, well, not the main key, but the main driver of the market is fundamentals, right? If you're looking at the chart, everything to the left is technicals. 
everything to the right of the of current price is fundamentals is 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 driven fundamentally so um, make sure that you guys are not ignoring the technicals on the charts fundamentals play a huge role I'm just going to talk about a couple of key risk events that you guys should look out for this week. All right. So um, Tuesday evening. Now, it may be a different time where you guys are. Okay. So um, make sure that if you're using the economic calendar, that it's set to the time of wherever you are. Matter of fact, I need to actually change this because I was just in Canada, guys. I was actually like less than 12 hours ago. I was in Montreal, spent some time in Toronto, and now I'm in Los Angeles for a couple days before, like I said, I go to Thailand. So 510, perfect. So we'll go to the calendar. 40 people on here. This is crazy, guys. This is super, super awesome. Um, so uh, Tuesday evening, key risk event is we have Bank of Japan with an interest rate decision. They are looking at keeping interest rates the same, but that should be a market mover. There's like a lot of other red folders, but I'm not gonna talk about every single one, guys. And then um, we have GDP, or I'm sorry, GBP, so the pound, the, the British pound. We have an interest rate decision from them as well on November 1st, on Thursday. And Friday is the infamous NFP, non-farm payrolls, okay? So um, we, I'm not, again, I'm not going to bore you guys to death talking about it. If you guys want to learn more about that, um, I do daily webinars Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for my groups where I'll go a little bit more in depth about that. Um, but let's share some setups with you guys. All of these pairs with a red flag next to them, get ready. Make sure you have something to take some notes with, guys, because all there, there's nine setups that I see this week in the market, nine directional biases that I have. Now, am I going to take a trade on every single one of them? Uh, probably not, but I, I'm going to narrow it down to one of these pairs. Um, Jake, you asked, will I be trading NFP? Absolutely not. I do not. I am not a news trader. Um, it's basically, I mean, new, trading the news is gambling at the end of the day, right? You are not a market maker. I am not a market maker. We don't know which direction the market is going to spike up or spike down. So um, why risk your capital when we can just, you know, look at good setups in the market and trade those setups rather than um, playing, playing, you know, roulette basically, red or black or up or down. All right. So absolutely not trading, but so where do I stand with the dollar index guys? All right. So the dollar index created a little bit of a top, this daily chart on the dollar index. Um, again, just kind of recapping previous history on the dollar index. So we've been expecting this rise for some time. We were expecting a dip on the dollar index and then we were expecting a rise. Now we have gotten that rise and I think we've come to a close. I think we're right around a top for the dollar index. So my bias is to the downside on the dollar this week. Um, could we consolidate around this area? Could we run stops, you know, run the stops of early sellers right now? Absolutely. But overall, I think throughout this week, we're going to see downside on the dollar index. I'm going to just be really straightforward, just like that. Okay. Um, gold this week, Gold is at a pretty key level right now, guys. Uh, gold has actually been consolidating. Again, these are this is the daily chart, so I'm looking at things on a higher time frame. Um, the gold has been consolidating for the past two weeks. Um, now, it would make sense that uh, if we see downside on the U.S. dollar, that we're going to see buying in gold. Okay, not just because of the dollar. If you guys are familiar with stocks, if you guys have looked at the S&P 500 or if you have looked at the Dow recently, I can actually pull up the S&P just to give you an example. S&P bolt and, and the Dow look very similar to each other. So I'll just pull up one, but here's the S&P and lots of downside, right? Huge, huge, huge sell off on the S&P 500 right now. Um, which when this happens, it doesn't really necessarily correlate exactly to the US dollar, but it correlates to commodities like gold. When investors are uncertain in markets, um, when there is FUD, right? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt, they throw their money into safe havens. And some of those safe havens include gold, all right? Gold has always been known as a safe haven commodity. Um, also the yen, if you guys do not know that, like take some notes. If you guys are not taking notes right now, there's 40 of you guys on here right now. And if you guys are not taking notes, you're doing yourself a disservice because I'm going over a lot of information and a lot of nuggets in a very short amount of time. So stuff is super valuable. So another safe haven, um, currency is actually the yen, the, 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 the Japanese yen. So keep that in mind. Um, but anyways, yeah, so because I, because a lot of the other markets, equity markets and stocks and just across the board, um, 
are not doing too hot right now. I'm expecting more upside in gold. Um, I did have a position on gold last week. I had actually bought right in this area um, at, at 12.34 with a stop loss at 12.24 and a take profit at 12.65. I decided to close this trade at the end of the week at break even because I'm not a really big fan of the exhaustion candle that formed on Friday. So just to show you guys with gold, I do believe that gold is still going to rise. However, um, don't be surprised if gold drops and spikes up. We saw a lot of manipulation in this zone. If you guys remember Friday, this high on gold was broken. And what happens when this high, this is a form of manipulation, guys. When the high is broken, what happens is a lot of traders, not just retail traders, but uh, you know, people that are trading using algorithms and bots and EAs and, and retail trading, they place buy stops, right? They place an order to buy once price goes up high enough. So we saw market makers push price above the previous high to trigger all those buy stops. And now we're seeing downside, or now what I believe we're gonna see more downside on gold, which is gonna stop out everybody that bought up high. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at getting in lower because I think where my stop loss was at 1224 could potentially get hit. So that's why I chose, I mean, I'm not in it anymore, but it, that was my stop loss. So it was a break even trade, uh, but that's my opinion on Euro USD. Uh, this is way over my head, but pen in hand. No worries, Daniel. Um, Euro USD, I believe Euro USD has found a bottom. Okay. So if you guys are new to trading, one of the strongest correlations that you should understand is the dollar index, which is the very first uh, index that we looked at. And uh, versus Euro USD. Okay. These have a complete opposite of each other, right? If, if I were clear all my trend lines, everything that I have on my chart, you'll notice that the dollar index and Euro USD are literally a flipped image of each other. Okay. So if I, if I told you guys already that I'm expecting downside on the dollar index, what direction am I expecting Euro USD to go? All right. Expecting it to go. Let's see. We got some chat. Up. Exactly, Jake. Yep, exactly. So I'm expecting Euro USD to rise at this point. Now, please, guys, the biggest thing that I can say on these weekly outlooks is because I'm a professional trader, you guys hear this confidence, I'm sure, behind my voice and a lot of conviction. I am not right 100% of the time, okay? Now, I do believe we are going to move up higher, but there is still, do not just go and place a buy on Euro USD just because I said it's going to go higher because I think Euro USD could consolidate, maybe even break the lows before going up higher, right? Triggering a lot of sellers so that way uh, market makers can get the liquidity that they need to move the market higher, okay? Very, very possible. So um, yeah, and then we also have a little bit of a higher low being created, right? This is our original low. This is a little bit of a higher low. So overall, I think we are gonna see some upside. Uh, keep in mind from a higher time frame perspective on Euro USD, we have, let me just give you guys the, the other perspective we have broken through a major zone, right? This green zone that you see me drawing through charts. I apologize with the sirens, guys. You guys know how LA is. Um, that we did break this weekly support zone, okay? So definitely be careful with Euro USD. Um, it's, it's probably not my go-to. I think there's some better setups that we're gonna go over, but just I wanted to at least give you guys my opinion and my bias. USD Swiss franc, you guys can see pretty clean price action. We found a rejection in a bullet, or I'm sorry, a bearish engulfing daily candle. This is the daily chart um, at parity at 1.00, which has always been a significant level for this pair. So I believe that we're going to see downside. So if you guys are uh, want to write this correlation down, usually Euro USD and USD Swiss franc, this pair that we're looking at right now, have a negative correlation, okay? So you put two and two together, that means that the dollar index and this pair right here generally have a positive correlation, right? So I'm expecting the dollar index to drop, Euro USD to go up, and USD Swiss franc to go down, okay? Um, neither of the pound pairs I'm interested in trading, uh, and that's because we have an interest rate decision this week. Remember at the very beginning, I was showing you guys the economic calendar, big interest rate decision for the pound, lots of stuff going out. Um, it's, they are not going to be raising interest rates, right? All nine have already been, all nine committee members have already voted to keep interest rates the same. So it's guaranteed they are not going to be raising interest rates. Um, both of the pound pairs not interested in trading. 
Dollar yen. I do want to point out dollar yen. I do think we're going to see downside in dollar yen as gold moves down. Remember, we were just talking about at the very beginning how when investors, we aren't talking about you and me, guys. We aren't talking about retail traders. We're talking about the big boys, the, the people that have real money, real skin in the game, billions of dollars of money in the markets. When those investors are uncertain, they move their money into things like gold, which we're seeing rise right now, and the yen. So um, obviously, most of you guys should know, and if you don't know, this is super basics. You need to really go back to baby pips, or you need to go back to the basics and learn before you're, you're really watching these webinars. I mean, it's great to watch these weekly outlooks, but um, it's, it's also even better when things make right? So understand that when this chart goes down, that is the US dollar weakening and that is the Japanese yen strengthening, okay? So that means people are buying the Japanese yen if this pair goes down and uh, can, uh, simultaneously selling the US dollar. Now, it doesn't mean always that it's exactly happening. It could just be, you could actually see the dollar getting strong, but the yen just getting stronger, right? And it pulls this pair down. So kind of take that with a grain of salt, but we are breaking a major trend line on the daily. Um, we are breaking through a major zone. I've, I've mentioned for a while that my targets on dollar yen are lower, um, around like one, the one ten fifty area. So I would expect, um, dollar yen to move lower. We can actually get a good target on here, guys. If you guys want a specific price that I can give you, let's go here right there. Let's go with our extension. Okay. Let's go our extension dip the one ten eighty five. Okay, all 38 of you guys on here right now should, should have this written down. Write it in your trading journal right now, USD JPY, you know, David's target 11085. And let's see what happens. Okay. Um, AUD USD and NZD USD, both of these pairs I make. Now, let me be very clear. I just popped this up. I showed you guys a trade. I have not entered this. This is a trade idea. Okay. I am not entering. This is just an idea, but I'm actually probably going to enter lower. I'm probably going to enter on a bounce. I'll zoom in guys for you. So do not take this as a trade. It's just, I mean, don't take this as like an official signal. I'm not giving you guys as a signal or anything. Um, just as of yet, if you're in the premium group where I trade for you and give out signals, this is most likely very, very, very high chance that this is probably going to be the first trade that we take this week. Um, but let me go and look at just the manipulation on the four hour. Okay. I am not interested in buying at current price. I am waiting for a dip on AUD USD to induce sellers to, so that market makers can, can get the liquidity or find the liquidity that they're looking for and then moving up higher, right? Our first target is obviously going to be this trend line, um, this descending trend line where we're probably going to see some sort of, uh, you know, psychological resistance because everybody has this trend line on their chart. Um, and then if we break this trend line, I mean, you look at this on the daily chart, we would be, we would be breaking a huge, huge downtrend. So I'm telling you guys right now, keep your eyes on AUD USD. If it breaks this trend line, we're expecting some major upside. Okay. And where we would, where I would be targeting, why I'm targeting all the way up here, where I just had that little trade idea is, um, I have this fibbed out, right? So I, if I delete this, I'll just redo it, right? If I fib out from the highs all the way to the lows over here, we can see a lot of confluence with the 38.2% retracement level, which acted as previous support and also previous resistance. Okay. So lots of good stuff on AUD USD. Um, let's look at NZD USD. So if you guys do not know this as well, AUD USD and NZD USD. Okay. So Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar have a very strong positive correlation. If you guys are not, have you, if you guys haven't looked at a map recently and you aren't familiar with your geography, uh, New Zealand is a country just off of the east coast of Australia, right? And they, it's, it's the only country that is really close to, the, to, uh, to New Zealand. So they rely very heavily on imports, exports, trades, goods, everything with each other. So even the exchange rates with each other are very, very similar. So they tend to have a very positive correlation. So very similar to that very long downtrend that we've been talking about on NZD on, on AUD USD. Same thing with NZD USD. We've seen a very strong downtrend. And if we break this downtrend kind of like this zone that we're moving lower, there's not a perfect trend line on this pair. I mean, we could maybe draw out a trend line. Let's just see real quick. Let's see a couple of different, we'll draw a couple different things. Let's see this, something like that or something like, 
that a couple different trend lines to look at. I mean, I honestly prefer this trend line right here. It's very confluent with this EMA. If you guys want to know what this moving average is coming down on my charts, it is the 55.0 EMA exponential moving average. If we break this zone, we're definitely seeing upside on this pair. Um, I'm a really big fan of both AUD USD and NZD USD. Big exhaustion candles formed on Friday, right? AUD USD, big exhaustion candle, right? It had originally, and this is very similar to, to gold, right? Very similar to gold where it like broke. Well, well, I'm just talking about principle wise, right? Gold broke the highs to to induce buy stops and then dropped. AUD USD broke the lows where everybody has their sell stops and everybody's okay. It broke the lows, so it has to keep going lower. Not quite, right? We obviously see that that's manipulation. It's to trick people into selling. When I believe the real move is, we're finding a bottom in this area. Um, also with AUD USD, just to back up just a smidge. If you guys are any familiar with the Wyckoff method, it's actually a very simple method. It's not complex at all, um, but it talks about an accumulation phase where we have an area of consolidation, which is this whole area right here. Um, generally, you see a, a, a double bottom or a low followed by a higher low. And then this right here where we actually break support, that's called the spring. And that's where like I just said, where we break the lows to induce a lot of sellers. And that's where market makers are able to pick up that liquidity that they need for price to go up higher. And then we see this phase right here that we're going to go up. That's, this is called the markup phase. So that is what I'm looking to trade is the markup phase. Um, and uh, that's, that's what we're going to look for. We're going to look for this buy on AUDUSD. Very, very, very confident on this pair. Again, guys, do not just go, I mean, I have, I have no remorse, guys. If, if you're going to go in and you're just going to take like a standard lot on a buy just because I told you to and you end up blowing your account, losing money, that's on you guys, all right? Always use good risk management. Never risk more than 2% of your account per trade. It should be 1% to 2% or less per trade, okay? Uh, if, you, if you're out there just randomly putting in a lot size, let me just tell you guys this too. Let me just go off on a, just a small tangent very quickly. If there is somebody that you follow on social media that tells you, okay, for every hundred dollars that you have, trade 0.01 lots. And every thousand dollars that you have, trade 0.10 lots. And every ten thousand dollars that you have, trade one lot. They are brand new to the market, guys. They have no idea how to truly trade, okay? Because if someone is telling you that, they have no concept of risk management, okay? Because there, it, it's physically impossible to use. I mean, if you want to make money in, in, in Forex, you cannot use the same lot size on every single trade. That's why if you guys follow me on social media and Instagram and Facebook stories where you guys see me post my profits, you'll see that my lot size is always changing. And that's because, let me just give you an example, right? If you're going to take a trade, and let's say, let's say you use that principle, right? Somebody tells you, okay, you have $1,000 for every trade, you know, because you have $1,000, you can use a 0 0.10 lot, okay? Well, what happens with your, with your stop loss, right? Let's say you take a trade with a 20 pip stop loss. Okay, that's all right with a 0 0.10 lot size, right? You're going to only lose $20 if it hits your, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, $20 if it hits your stop loss, what if the stop loss is you take a swing trade and it's 150 pips? Well, now you're risking a lot more because you're, you aren't changing your lot size, right? The bigger your stop loss, the smaller your lot size. And the smaller your stop loss, the bigger your lot size, right? But it should always, at the end of the day, the same percentage or the same equity in your account should be risked, right? So if you're trading a $1,000 account, you should only be risking $20 of that $1,000. So whatever lot size matches your stop loss to make, to lose $20. That, and that is why you use, I mean, I'll just quickly just show you guys this. I know I go over this a lot, but I'm just, I'm, I'm not really going to go too far, but I just see so many new people in here. I have to show you guys because this is valuable information. Guys, I use this religiously. There is not a single trade that I enter. All right, hand on the Bible. There is not a single trade that I enter that I do not look at this, that I do not use this calculator, okay? You put it, it's very simple to use. You put in your account size, you put in the percentage that you want to risk, 
you put in the stop loss that you're using, you find the pair that you're wanting to use, that you're trading, and then you press calculate, and it will tell you exactly what lot size to use, okay? So very, very simple. I mean, let's just take an example. Like last week, we had um, the gold trade, right? So it was like, I think um, it was a, it was a, I got in at 12.34, stop losses at 12.34. So that's a 100 pip stop loss on gold. So that's XAU USD. And we risked 2% of our account. And my personal account size, I mean, it's, I don't know exactly to the, to the penny I need to go look, but it's like 120 something thousand dollars and you know, whatever sense, right? Let's just say it's that boom, calculate. Boom. Now I know exactly what lot size to use 2.46 lots. And I know that I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose more than 2% of my account. Okay. So you use this religiously every single time you enter a trade, guys. This is, that is how you are able to define your risk and control what you're risking in the markets. Okay. And if you're not using that, you're going to lose all your money. You're going to blow all your money. If you're just putting in, oh, I feel like using this lot size. This trade looks good. I'm going to use this lot size. You're already done. You're done before you started, guys. You're, you're already out of the game. You don't, you don't get it. Okay. So make sure you understand that risk management. If you guys are new here, by the way, um, and I sound a little aggressive, it's just because I'm raw. I'm real with you guys. I wouldn't want, you know, when, when I first started Forex, guys, I did not have a mentor. I did not have someone like myself where I could go on and someone would actually be real with me and tell me the right stuff, the, the real way to trade, right? I was brought into Forex just like most of you guys were brought in, right? That it's this that, that it's this game to flip an account and, you know, see how much money you can make in the shortest amount of time. And you'll, you'll learn. I mean, if, if, if you haven't already learned the hard way, hopefully you don't have to, because you have me, you have someone that's being real with you and not sugarcoating stuff. But if you don't have someone like that, um, it, it's very difficult to, you know, you, you, you lose a lot of money in the markets before you ever learn. Um, so let's go ahead and look at, uh, I will say Euro AUD and Euro NZD, both of these pairs, look good for potential sells this week. Now, I think be, uh, um, that we're going to see a little bit of a pullback, right? If we were to kind of like, let's say, let's fib out Euro NZD. And both of these have to do with the correlation to Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar strengthening, right? Because if we're, if we're looking at buying, we have a lot of confidence in buying the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar, then it would make sense that if the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar start to really strengthen, which I believe is what we're going to start to see happen. Um, I believe they're going to become stronger than the Euro. Um, and also because, um, oh yeah, it, yeah, it's just those two. I'm, I'm biased at those two strengthening. So it should drag this pair lower, but expect with both of these pairs to move up higher short term, uh, probably short term, even medium term, maybe over the next couple of days, we might not even get these trades this week, guys. Okay. Euro AUD and Euro NZD. We may not get the shorts that we're looking for because price is still pretty far from where I'd like to sell, right? Somewhere around maybe the 50, 50% or 61.8%, maybe even the 38.2. It just, I really have to evaluate price action, but um, I believe right now, especially with like this pair right now, there's a lot of consolidation. There's a bear flag and I'm sure most people just want to short at this point and market makers know that, right? They see that price is below the, 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 the EMA. They see that a lot of people see this consolidation. They know that people see this exhaustion candle right here. So they know that people are wanting to short right now. So this price action induces a lot of sellers right now, people that are going short and I believe we're going to see price move up higher, which is going to run the stop losses of people that shorted. And then people that shorted without a stop loss and over leveraged their accounts, they're going to get margin called or blow their account before they even get a chance to make the real money on the downside. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for guys. I'm going to get to the comments. I see that there's a lot of comments in there. I don't even, I'm just in, in the, in the groove right now. I'm going to keep going real quick. Um, Cad Yen, I will say this with Cad Yen. Um, I'm not super interested in this pair. I did, uh, eight days ago. So it is October 28th right now. You can see up here, October 20th. I did mention that I was expecting downside on this pair. So I do think that we're going to see some more downside. Um, I'm, I would like some more confirmation though. Um, I'm, I, let me, let me throw it on the four hour. I'd probably like to re-enter on like a retest of this EMA, or if we continue to just consolidate in this area, maybe look for like a break and move lower. Okay something like that. Let's go into the chat real quick, guys. Let's see if what questions we have. Uh, use this everyone. The calculator is priceless. No time for fluff. Learn the hard way for sure. Appreciate you. Cad yet. Awesome. All, all these guys, we just, we just did. Okay. Um, now last thing um, I am just going to just quickly plug myself in real quick guys and show you guys and just cause I 
literally like don't plug myself in ever, but I am going to very quickly. Let me just pull up one thing. Um, if you're watching this live, go back to the recording. I'm only going to have this open for a little bit or for like a couple seconds because this is recorded on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can pause it. I am going to be posting this all over social media a little, a little bit later today, guys, but this is a little infographic very quickly. I'm just going to share with you guys. This is the old pricing of what I do. Um, so currently for the past couple of years, I've offered a lifetime package where you can literally pay one time and you have access to everything, every single thing I do. Hands-free trade copier with 0% profit share, all my daily webinars, all my current and future videos. Um, or you have the option to do that monthly. Now the new pricing you guys can see right here, go through it on your own. I'm going to be separating things a little bit. You're going to have the option to do just signals by itself um, or and or have lifetime access. So guys, uh, one of the things that I'm actually doing in Thailand is I am completing a 70 lesson course. So a full fledged, it's, it's, it's hosted on, it's going to be hosted on teachables. If you guys are familiar with teachables, it's like a very nice, like it's kind of like Udemy or Thinkific. If you guys have heard of those, they host like courses. And so it's going to be complete with quizzes and different modules. And it's going to be step-by-step -step. really something that I have not had up until this point. Um, and it's, it's really time, right? I mean, a lot of you guys want to know how I trade and, and exactly how I do the things that I do. And, you know, I give, I give out a lot on my daily webinars, but if you aren't able to consistently watch like all of my daily webinars, a lot of it might go over your head. So this is going to be kind of something that you can go and do at your own pace. And you can see, I'm actually making it very, very, very cost effective, right? I'm not charging thousands of dollars for this course. It's going to be two ninety nine dollars one time. You're going to have access to every everything that I have, you're going to have access to all of the daily webinars that I do, um, the premium chat room, everything. And I am so confident guys that my less, my course that I'm releasing, uh, is going to help you guys out that I am offering a, I, you know, everybody in this niche does no refunds on this course, no refunds on this, no refunds on that. I am doing a 30 day money back guarantee. If you are not, if you have not found absolute value and you don't absolutely love everything that I go over because I am so confident in my skill and so confident in my, my, my teachability to share things with you guys that, uh, you just, you just tell me and you get a refund. Okay. So, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll go to back to the charts real quick. If you're watching the recording, obviously you can pause it right there take a screenshot of it, whatever you need to do. I'm going to be posting it on all of our forms of social media, but that's really it for today, guys. Uh, let's see in the chat, uh, GDP Swiss Frank, where do we access to the calculator? Daniel, look, you can literally like type on Google. You can go position size calculator. You can literally just Google position size calculator and it's going to be the very first thing that pops up. Okay. Super, super simple. Okay. Um, Arsalan, you just joined. Can I do a quick recap? Sorry, man, you missed it. You're going to have to watch the live or watch the replay. I'll have it up on YouTube in just a couple minutes here. So you'll have the whole replay at your uh, disposal. Ashley, thank you for your time as well. Um, absolutely Arsalan, no problem. All right, guys, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you guys so much. Next time you guys see me next week, I will be in Thailand. Um, follow me on social media, guys. I'm going to be sharing my entire experience while I'm there. Granted, I'm going to be working a lot. And, and, and just hang, hanging out like at my place filming videos for you guys. But um, obviously it's Thailand, it's another country. I'm gonna you know, get some cool food, meet some cool people, maybe check out a couple cool places. So um, you know, if you guys want to see my adventure um, out there, uh, definitely go ahead and uh, follow me on, on Instagram. It's just my first and last name, at David Schinkel, okay? So uh, if, if this helped you guys, I'm gonna, have the, I'm gonna send you guys all of the recording. I'm gonna send you guys the recording um, through Facebook and everything. And share this with your guys' friend. Uh, share this with your friends. Share this with your family. Share this with whoever you think would get some good use out of this if you guys are in the neat niche. Other than that, guys, if you are obviously a member, I'll see you guys tomorrow on the first daily webinar of the week. If you are not, I will see you guys tomorrow on the free weekly outlook. Take care, guys, and have a safe week.